This past week, the Liberal government announced several new affordability measures, including a two-month tax holiday on some essential items, and almost 19 million Canadians will be getting a $250 check in the mail this spring. But the measures cost billions of dollars and come as the government continues to struggle in the polls. I spoke to the President of the Treasury Board, Anita Anand, on Friday. Mr. Anand, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I, I want to start with why this right now, uh, this move right now. The Conservatives, as you know, they proposed a tax holiday in 2021, and, and your government said that that would be too big a loss of tax revenue and, and would risk having to make difficult choices like f cutting other programs. What has changed? Why is this now a good idea? Well, we have to look at the context that we are in now today. What we've been doing over the course of the past year is ensuring that we have economic policies and supports in place for Canadians, uh, such as the National School Food Program, which Ontario just decided uh, to join with us on to provide meals to 160,000 more children in Ontario. Um, but in terms of the tax holiday that we're providing to Canadians, this is a measure that is going to ease the pocketbooks of Canadians right across the country going into a very busy season mm -hmm. and it will be in place for two months. In addition, we are putting on the table supports for workers. 18 million workers are going to benefit with cash back. So these are measures that we are taking. They are responsible. Uh, we are continuing to maintain our economic fiscal markers that are strong. We have the lowest net debt to GDP ratio in the G7, a AAA credit rating, Rosie. Uh, and so this is a responsible way to help Canadians during a difficult time. Okay, and I'll ask you more about that, but but I do want to ask you about some of the provinces who have a harmonized sales tax. Um, Newfoundland and Labrador decided, okay, we'll go along with this. We're happy with the pause. We can afford it. Not all provinces can. New Brunswick uh, says that their province will lose $62 million dollars. Um, and the Prime Minister, when asked about this on Friday, sure didn't seem like he was keen to compensate provinces. Is that something that the government is considering doing? And, and, and if so, why not? There is continued no negotiations and discussions with the province, but we are clear uh, that we want to provide this tax holiday for Canadians right across the country, even in provinces that are emphasizing that there may be difficulty in doing so because yeah. of the particular tax system that they have. Uh, but again, this is a measure for all Canadians. All Canadians should be able to benefit from it, as the Prime Minister has said, during the holiday season and going Going into 2025. Sure, but if provinces that have harmonized sales tax, and these are primarily Atlantic provinces because Ontario has already taken the HIST off for a bunch of things, are going to lose millions, that could mean that they have to cut services to their citizens, right? Like I, I w that would sort of undo the intent behind uh, behind the measure, would it not? Well, we've seen uh, Premier Fury, for example, be very supportive, and I know yeah. the conversation is occurring right now with Minister LeBlanc and his provincial and territorial counterparts, uh, given that he's intergovernmental affairs. Okay, you, you, you talked about um, how the economy is strong, but this is more than $6 billion. Uh, is, is this all going on, the deficit? How are, where are the fiscal guardrails? Because this seems like a pretty big gift to people at a time when um, maybe that kind of spending isn't needed. Well, I believe it is needed, and we believe it is needed, Rosie, because at this point in time for Canadians, it has been a difficult year. We've seen inflation coming down yeah. at the same time Canadians' pocketbooks are being pinched because of high price rate, prices on groceries and other essential goods. So we're going to see this tax-free holiday on necessities, diapers, food and other essentials like clothing. So let's um, make sure we recognize the importance and the role that this measure is going to serve for Canadians. At the same time, the economic markers are there. We've seen inflation consistently coming down in this country, unlike in other G7 countries. We are also maintaining that AAA credit rating. That is independent credit organizations looking at the health of our economy right. and rating it uh, very, very highly. And so I know the Minister of Finance is very preoccupied with our fiscal guardrail 
guardrails, and she'll continue to do that while putting measures on the table for Canadians right across the board, including those 18 million workers come the spring. You, you, you realize, obviously, though, that Canadians see this, some, and, and some may welcome it, but also know that the government is double digits behind in the polls and that this looks like a way to buy off Canadian support. Let's talk about partisanship right now, Rosie. I tabled the supplementary estimates on Monday last week, and that's $21 billion in supports for Canadians. Instead of having a debate about those supports on the floor of the House of Commons, we are seeing the Canadians playing partisan games. They are obstructing the work of the House. They're refusing to let this matter go to committee. And so I would put that argument back to you. What we're trying to do is introduce legislation yeah. for supports for Canadians. On the other side of the House, we are seeing political games. Okay, but, but, but to my point, it does look like the government's trying to, to buy support at a time when, when the message around affordability, Minister, has not seemed to get through to Canadians different things that you've done, and that this is sort of a desperate attempt to win back some of that support. Rosie, you and I had many conversations during COVID-19 and our approach as a government was to put supports of all types on the table for Canadians, not just in vaccines and rapid tests, but also in terms of loans for small businesses and for students and the like. We have always been there to support Canadians and this is another example of how during a particularly difficult time, we are doing the same thing with a tax-free holiday. Uh, is there any concern around uh, in government that putting the GST back on these items will be difficult, that people will over a two month period become accustomed? For instance, diapers, good example. Maybe that should be GST free forever. Is there any concern that, that some of those things will have to be made permanent? We're certainly taking it one step at a time, making sure that we do have the fiscal frame in mind on the one hand, mm -hmm. but also being there to support Canadians with these essential items, groceries, diapers, clothing, and the like, so that we do strike that balance between fiscal responsibility and supporting Canadians. You, you That's talked the to, difference yeah. between us and the opposition, Rosie, right there. It's you, a philosophical difference about supporting Canadians during their time of need. You, you talked there about uh, the supplementary estimates. The House is still at a standstill, two months now of this. Um, at some point, you have suggested this might make it difficult for departments to get the money they need to, to function, to operate. How are you preparing for that possibility, to, to cash manage, if you will, if the House doesn't get moving again? So let's be clear that public servants' salaries are covered under legislation, okay. and so public servants will continue to be paid. But when you are a smaller department, you have a smaller purse and you will feel the constraints more readily than those larger departments. And so it is necessary not only for the functioning of government, but also for those supports for Canadians. Affordable housing, dental care, supports for youth. Those are items that the Conservatives should care about if they truly care about our country and the well-being of its population. Yet we are not seeing seeing them move towards letting those supplementary estimates go to committee and get on the floor of the House for debate. So, so ju just again, though, to you, what are you doing to, to, to make sure that that money can flow uh, if the Conservatives don't, don't play ball and don't allow this to, to move forward? I am expressing my very serious concern for the supports needed by Canadians and for the functioning of this government. And with this serious concern, I hope that all parties in the House will see it necessary to let's get the business of the House moving again. Okay, Minister Anand, thank you for your time, thanks. Thanks so much, Rosie, take care. Some provinces say this tax holiday may come with a hefty price tag for them, including New Brunswick, which says this affordability measure could cost the province as much as $62 million. Earlier, I spoke with New Brunswick's finance minister, Rene Leg Legacy, about those concerns. Minister Legacy, nice to see you this morning. Good morning, Morris Murray. Um, so it's my understanding that this has come as a, a bit of a surprise to some provinces that this decision for the, the GST or the HST uh, pause and holiday. Um, is this something that your province can afford to, uh, to lose right now financially? Uh, well, listen, we're still, we're still analyzing the actual costs. Uh, affordability 
I mean, we ran on a platform of affordability, so it's it's very difficult for us to say we we don't like the idea uh, just because it's not it's, it didn't come from us. Yeah. Um, I I think when we look at the budget, we've been in discussions with the feds on a lot of other files. Uh, hopefully, as we move along and we start negotiating, we'll have some that'll cost us some money and maybe some that'll it'll save us and we'll come out in the wash somehow uh, whole. How, how much do you stand to lose, though, from this two-month break? Uh, we're still fully analyzing it. I, I, my pre- preliminary numbers are saying around, uh, uh, there's an estimate of around $62 million. And what, what, how does that compare to your, your budget in New Brunswick, <laughs> in terms of what you have? <laughs> Well, we just announced, uh, we, we had our second quarter update. We were looking at about a $90 million, $92 million projected deficit. We have other um, other programs that we've introduced in our platform that we want to get done that, that's going to cost some money in, over the first quarter of the year. Uh, right. It's it, it probably relates into uh, maybe a, a, around under 1%, um, maybe half a percent right. on but, our total budget. But significant, is that fair to say? It, it is significant, but yeah. again, um, we uh, we ran on a platform of affordability for New Brunswickers. We wanted to bring out some help. Um, we, we, you know, I, I think it's it's an interesting idea. Last year, the previous government, we had our own program. It was called a fuel and food benefit, where we gave a holiday uh, right before Christmas. Uh, so I, I really can't fault the, the you know the federal government for wanting to do the same thing. Um, so uh, it's just a matter now of, of, of working through the numbers and making sure that we can find a way to uh, to balance our budget. So it, it sounds like, um, it doesn't sound to me like you're negotiating whether this is going to happen. It sounds to me like you're hoping you can get back the money in some other way. Or, or am I misreading you? Are you actually talking to Ottawa about them taking over the whole cost of this and, and still sending you the money? Uh, our understanding is the the, the uh, Comprehensive Integrated Tax Coordination Agreement, SITCA, and I'm really happy that there's there's an actual acronym for this one. It's it's a handful to, to talk to. Uh, they they have the ability to to take this action, and there there is some provisions that we uh, we can look into, and my staff are looking at it right now. But uh, I I just get the sense from uh, from uh, from my premier and from our team that. We we uh, we want to we want to see these uh, these benefits go to New Brunswickers just as as many other Canadians. Christmas is a tough time. Uh, we've heard about affordability issues all through our campaign, how people are struggling. Sure. Uh, so I feel that uh, you know if we can provide that that little bit of help extra, yeah. um, it, it's a good idea. It, it, you're very diplomatic, I must say, but but would it have been uh, more helpful perhaps for the prime minister and the federal government to let you guys know that this was on the table and, and so that you could plan accordingly? Because, it, you know, it, it's fine to say you, you're worried about affordability, too. I think probably your citizens are glad to hear that. But but a, a little bit frustrating, perhaps, that it just came as a surprise to everyone. Well, honestly, I think that the, 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 the biggest frustrating aspect is more around communication. We're, we're just trying to yeah. catch up to the news and get the details and have discussions around it. Uh, I'm not sure if we would have had more lead time that we would have come out to a different uh, outcome. What I, what I know is we've been discussing with the federal government for the last few weeks as a, as a government, and I know that our teams have been having some bilateral discussions on a lot of subjects that we feel we may be able to... Uh, to uh, to find some ways to, uh, to to you know to better the situation at the end of the year. Well, so tell me what 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 you're looking at in terms of um, are there other places where you need more support from Ottawa generally? Well, there's I don't think it's any secret that the previous administration didn't have a very good relationship with the federal government. Uh, so we are trying to rebuild that aspect and and see if there was uh, anything that was left on the table just because we we you know. I'd say the previous premier was obstinate about not wanting to do deals. Yeah. I, I can only speak to some of my files. I'm also sure. Minister of Energy, and there's been a lot of discussion on a lot of energy files that hopefully we can start closing off and, and, and moving some projects forward because it is a big challenge in New Brunswick like many other provinces. The, the idea of the harmonized sales tax, um, you know, in some ways makes a lot of sense. In moments like this, maybe not so much. I wonder whether it's something that you think still is the way to go for, for your province. Well, we're we we're actually proposing to to take the harmonized sales tax, or at least the, the provincial aspect of it, off our our power bills. Uh, so I can see why there's there's an attraction to it. 
initial reaction from the public, I think, has been fairly positive. I think if, if people can get a break around Christmas, they're, uh, they're, they're certainly going to take it. As finance minister, I, 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 you know, one of the positive aspects is this is a one-off. Uh, this yeah. is not a structural cost that it's going to it's going to be repeated every year. So uh, we can deal with this specific issue and uh, and then just uh, maybe, maybe move on to other files that will be more structurally uh, foundational to uh, to make our, our situation better. Do you see it being difficult to put the GST uh, or the HST back on these goods and services after the two months? Because that's also the concern, right? People get used to not paying it on their wine and beer, and then they don't ever want to pay it again. I I, I think people for for a sixty day period. I, I think most Canadians understand the concept, and they'll 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 see it as a as a you know. We have Black Friday sales That's right. <laughs> on Mondays. Yeah. We all we all yeah. know the prices are going up. And we yeah. don't stop purchasing stuff. So I think <laughs> there's a clear understanding of of how these uh, rebates work. Okay, Minister Legacy, come back anytime. Nice to meet you. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. So how is this tax break going to help businesses like restaurants, for instance? Earlier this morning, I spoke with Brenda O'Reilly, owner of the Yellow Belly Brewery and O'Reilly's Bar and Grill in St. John's, Newfoundland. Brenda O'Reilly, good to see you this morning. Good morning. So tell me what your reaction was when you heard this, this GST holiday, this break, and, and, and what it might mean for, for your restaurant. Well, it was welcome news, to be honest, um, because everyone knows how hard hit the restaurant sector was since COVID. Mm -hmm. And of course, the effect that COVID were bad enough, but inflation has been really killing us, to be honest. So what will this do, do you think? This will bring in more people, people will spend more? What, how, what do you think will be the impact? <clears throat> so I think it's two-pronged, and I think that, yes, I think people will come out because our government here in Newfoundland has matched it. So right. the full 15% is off um, restaurant meals for that two-month period. And so I do think, you know, a 15% discount is big, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might get people out in the, in the dark days of winter, which is when we desperately need it. Uh, our industry just falls off a cliff after New Year's Eve for January and February. Um, the weather is bad enough, but of course, you know, people are broke. And I think they need an incentive to get out. And yeah. I think it's going to help them, um, you know, jet generate more revenue, but also on the back end. Yeah. And and what will you have to do anything to prepare for this? Are, are there any changes you have to make in terms of, you know, computers and taking the tax off? Is there anything like that that will be complicated or difficult? No, I don't think so. Our POS provider actually reached out to us immediately the next day and said, we're here for you. We're here to help. We're putting okay. together a plan. We'll be in touch. Um, but because it's coming off of most everything uh, in the restaurant in Newfoundland, yeah. we could just take it off and put it back on the things that it applies to. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm looking at it as a marketing opportunity as well, um, yeah. you know, to get those last minute um, Christmas people out or, you know, people coming out shopping and uh, or, you know, for, um, you know, New Year's and as well yeah. help us sell New Year's uh, dinner reservations and stuff like that. So I see it as a very positive thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a good test to see what happens. When GST was first put in in the early 90s, I mean, I've been in the restaurant industry a long time. It was massively devastating. Mm. So it'll be good to see that it's like to not have a tax yeah. on restaurant meals to see what well, it does to yeah. stimulate the economy. Yeah, I wonder, I mean, there have been questions about when you take things off, it's going to be hard to put it back on. I, I wonder whether you think this should also be a test to see whether maybe it doesn't need to be on with your business. Well, I would agree with that anyway. But, <laughs> uh, you know, meals are meals, whether you're eating them at home or you're eating at a restaurant, food yeah. is food. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I do agree with that. But Let's see what happens. And it is a good test. And, and hopefully they'll extend it to the end of February. February is a very hard month yeah. in the restaurant industry and in retail of any sort, of course. But, you know, we really feel it. And the weather is hard enough as it is, right? Right. Uh, last question. What, what do you make of the, the government doing this? Um, you know, as you say, you've been dealing with post-COVID, inflation, all sorts of challenges uh, financially. And, and what do you make of the government giving this break and then handing out the, the rebate checks to uh, later in the spring? Well, I mean, there's lots of th ways of looking at it, but for right now, I'll take the win because <laughs> we res restaurants have been teetering. I mean, we're dropping like flies. You know, 52% of us were breaking even or losing money. Um, so, you know, it's been much, very much a struggle. So I'll take the win any way I can get it, and uh, we'll see what happens when the fallout. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more people in our places during the winter. And, you know, everywhere, like the restaurant industry is the only industry in Canada where we're in every single nook and cranny 
society of this entire country. Mm. So it's important. And I feel like finally we're getting a little bit of respect, which is great. Brenda, so nice of you to make the time for us this morning. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Rosemary.